you you have to do a proper design and and put this in properly because you're going to affect things as George was asking around the septic you wouldn't want to freeze your septic system up because you're drawing heat too much heat out of the ground at that point right so that's where proper design comes in I mean I can have that field is half the field, but that means I concentrate it, pulling energy from a, one spot and I'm going to maybe cause a problem in that spot. We got we have to spread that out so we use the energy over a wide area or we have to dig deep enough, right? Is that where you're trying to whether or not that created a more No, well, well, no, the reason because the renewable is because how much energy I need to put into this system to operate this system. Right, you know, a PV system. I'm not. I have the energy I'm embodied in manufacturing it, but I'm not necessarily putting energy in into operate it. Right, and a a true geothermal system where we're taking hot springs or molten lava or whatever, we're not putting energy into that. Right, we're just removing energy. Here, I need to put energy into the system to get in more energy back out. Right, so it's all in the definition of renewable, right? You not no, I wouldn't recommend it, no. Right? Well, well I mean that's true, right? I mean a lot of times in the horizontal loop, yeah, you have the land space. They lay the horizontal loop out, right? Say in Prince Edward County, there's different systems, but they're on the farm, and it, that horizontal loop is underneath the drive that goes back into the fields, right? They're not planting trees on top of it. So. <laughs> it's just not, that's why, like they say, I want to make you aware. The other issue when you do your boreholes, they're not wells, right? We actually pour grout down into that borehole and seal that hole up. That helps the heat transfer, but it's actually a, we've drilled the hole, but now we're going to back we're going to fill it up with grout after as well. As I mentioned with installation, are you going to need a permit? That's going to be dependent on the municipality, and the municipalities are moving towards like you need a permit because yeah, we just buried a bunch of pipe right in the ground that needs to be documented. Because later on, maybe we want to, the municipality wants to run a water line, a, a sewer line, a gas line, an underground telephone line. They need to know where those buried surfaces are, buried pipes are on the subsurface, right? What's the local bylaws, right? You need to be aware of what those local bylaws are required. What, what level of drawings do you need to have, okay? And in regards, as I stated at the beginning, because there was so much issues around design, right, improper design and poor performance, we now have a certificate of installation from the Canadian Geo Exchange Coalition. So Haven Homes is one of the switch members. They have done the installation courses, the designer courses, written the exams to be able to say that they're doing the system properly, they're installing it properly. They're not going to have those issues of the loop connections breaking underground, right? They're going to be able to provide that 50-year warranty on that loop. The loop warranties are actually longer than the equipment that's in your house, okay? And it's all governed by that CSA standard, C448. There is a CSA standard. Here's operating cost. When you go to the website, you'll see that it's, yeah, it's yellow knife I use, but what I tried to find was something that's very new, okay? This is May 2008. I can find a lot of old data. You can see you have oil at 70% efficient, an oil furnace at 95%, then a propane, and then a wood pellet. Way on the far end at the lowest operating cost is our geo exchange system, okay? We can save upwards of 66% of our heating and air conditioning cost in our house. Government, of course, where the interest is coming from, yes, under the eco energy, eco action grant system, 
$3,500 for that Earth Energy system, okay? But, yeah, it does need to be installed to that CSA standard. And it has to be signed off by that accredited professional firm. So it's not a, this isn't a do-it-yourself project, right? We need to have that energy, to get any of these grants, remember that you need to have the energy audit done. You have the energy audit done previous to the work that's being performed. And then you have that 18-month window to get the work performed. And then you're going to have a post-audit. And that's when you're going to see that money back. Okay. Provincial side in Ontario matches funding. And now, of course, as Rick mentioned, you have their home renovation tax credits as well. So you get another amount of money back from the government. Cost, yeah, drilling, fifteen to twenty dollars per foot. And we're drilling two, three hundred foot holes. Depends on what we're drilling into five or six of those holes, right? Trenching, 1,200 to 1,600 feet of pipe. Okay, at five to six feet deep and at two, width, two foot widths. Okay, and we're gonna have six to 800 foot trench. So that give you an idea how long it was in that picture. This is, you can have a six to 800 foot trench down your piece of property. And that's going to be a lot cheaper, though. It's going to only be 2 to $3 to do that installation, as opposed to 15 to $20 per foot. So that horizontal loop is a lot better cost-wise. And like I say, if you're building a new home, hopefully you're able to do that while you're doing your landscaping process for your property. Maybe you're bringing in backfill and you're able to, you don't have to dig five, six feet down. Maybe you're bringing in two feet of landfill. So now we're only digging down four feet. That's really going to be dependent on your site condition. Installation cost, twenty to thirty thousand dollars for a three to four ton system. Okay. And that's viewed as that barrier. So you know that is a high installation cost, right? The installation cost is five, four to five times what your normal oil-fired, gas-fired, furnace, and traditional air conditioning system is. You can go and look at as well, though, is maybe you want to utilize an air source heat You get a grant for that as well, okay? Energy cost savings are most significant when you're replacing your electric furnace or your oil furnace, right? Because those traditional electrical furnaces higher fuel cost than, say, oil or pro propane or natural gas. Heating oil typically is a lower efficiency system. Okay. Can sometimes marginal savings when you're comparing it to high efficiency air source heat pumps or gas systems. Okay, just something for you to recognize. So when we talk about how much savings it's going to give you in your home is a matter of what you're comparing it to, okay? So, getting your project done, yeah, you have to analyze your needs, right? How much land space do you have? Because that vertical loop is going to be expensive, right? That horizontal loop is going to be enough money, but the vertical loop is going to be even more. Are you able to get, utilize water? And that, is that water supply sufficient? And it comes back to the same thing, right? If we design and spend our money on our home and control our heat loss and heat gain in our home, so if you're building a new home, invest in that building envelope, in that orientation that Jeremy was talking about, because I want to 